In 2020, the United States was rocked by violent protests centered on police brutality against African Americans, leading to thousands of arrests and several deaths. The reaction to and solutions for the problem of police brutality vary widely, but the movement we will be talking about today has an elegantly simple solution, secession. Early black nationalism and separatism in the 19th century was focused on leaving the United States outright, first being in league with the, quote, colonialist abolitionists, who wanted to repatriate freed slaves to Africa or the black American island of Haiti. Martin Delaney, the first identifiable black nationalist, was among these men. His nationalist thought can be summed up in this quote from 1852. We have native hearts and virtues, just as other nations, which, in their pristine purity, are noble, potent, and worthy of example. We are a nation within a nation, as are the Poles in Russia, the Hungarians in Austria, the Welsh, Irish, and Scotch in the British dominions. Eventually this project became the West African countries of Liberia and Sierra Leone, but did not bring about any kind of mass movement out of the United States. Colonialism faded away as a popular means to deal with the, quote, black question during and after the Civil War, with Delaney himself raising black troops to fight and ending the war as a major, the highest ranking black officer in the Union Army. However, with the failure of Reconstruction to bring about the desired revolutions and civil rights, Delaney and others like him again supported a return to Africa. Black nationalism in the U.S. reached its zenith with Marcus Garvey's foundation of the Universal Negro Improvement Association in 1918. Like the nationalists before him, Garvey, a native of Jamaica, supported emigration from the U.S. and identified the black nationalist mission in America with anti-imperialist movements in Africa itself. For the blacks still in America, however, Garvey's plan was to cultivate a powerful black economy with black entrepreneurship leading by example by founding the Black Star Shipping Line and other businesses of varying degrees of financial success. In his words, the UNIA appeals to the sane, sober, serious, earnest, hard-working man who earns his living by the sweat of his brow. UNIA appeals to the self-reliant yeomanry. Garvey's insistence that the U.S. was the white man's land led to his allying with white nationalism as it existed in the 20s, with organizations such as the KKK and men such as Lothrop Stoddard, who agreed with him that the black man had no place on this continent. After Garvey was arrested in 1923 on mail fraud charges and deported in 1927 back to Jamaica, the UNIA and Garveyism declined in popularity. The first major group to support black separatism as opposed to black nationalism was the Nation of Islam founded in 1930 by a former Garviate, Wallace D. Farad. A religious group following a very divergent and black-centric Islam, Farad was succeeded after his unexplained disappearance by Elijah Muhammad in 1934, who expanded their beliefs to include a racial mythology that placed white people as a horrible genetic experiment gone wrong, undertaken by a mad scientist thousands of years ago during the golden age of black power. Like Garvey before them, they promoted a form of black capitalism to bring black people up from their own efforts. During the 30s, the Japanese nationalist group, the Black Dragon Society, attempted to recruit black nationalists such as Elijah Muhammad into supporting a Japanese-led world with promises of racial egalitarianism, and the FBI kept close watch on the NOI during World War II, persecuting them for their anti-draft activities. Their race essentialism precluded any integration between blacks and whites, and supported an all-black nation-state, although this was still an interim measure until African Americans could rejoin the mother continent. Elijah Muhammad's closest pupil, Malcolm X, was converted in 1946, and became the public face of the group in the mid-50s, leading the group to the kind of popularity black nationalism had had in the days of Marcus Garvey maintaining a network of NOI businesses and a paramilitary defense force, the Fruit of Islam. X later became disgusted with what he saw as Muhammad's corruption and left the group for more mainstream Islam and universalist socialism in 1964 before his assassination the next year. 
X's divorce from NOI led to a decline in interest in the group. And though Louis Farrakhan, who took over the group in 1977, created a small revival in the 80s and 90s, culminating in Farrakhan's support for Jesse Jackson's 1984 campaign and the Million Man March in 1995 called by Farrakhan, it never regained its past influence. Meanwhile, in 1968, the Republic of New Africa was declared. With the deep south states of Louisiana, Alabama, Mississippi, Georgia, and South Carolina called Subjugated National Territory of Africans. Kuasi Balagoon, a former member of the Black Nationalist Black Panthers turned anarchist, joined the organization and started calling himself a quote, New African Anarchist. The group's paramilitary organization, the Black Legion, engaged in several bloody shootouts with American police but remained fairly irrelevant as an organization. Likewise, the new Black Panther Party, founded in 1989, after the original Black Panthers of the late 60s had abandoned Black nationalism for Maoist anti-racism, was also Black separatist, but remained a fringe organization and got little buy-in from the Black community at large. What many African Americans did buy into in large numbers was a sense of Black nationalism that had a more autonomous rather than separatist character. The ideological term black power referred to a set of cultural, economic, and political policies to increase black participation in the institutions that affected them, from policing, to schooling, to welfare bureaucracy, to stores they shopped in. The Congress of Racial Equality became part of this push for black empowerment, funding black cooperative farms and trying to leverage political power for bills that provided federal funding for more black-based economic initiatives in the late 60s, which ultimately were unsuccessful. Under the more PR-friendly term, quote, community control, these efforts have continued in black and other minority communities and have seen some success in getting local and municipal governments to allow a larger presence of black and non-white agents in police and other institutions. With a new era of, quote, white-on-black violence inaugurated by the death of Trayvon Martin in 2012, black nationalism and black separatism has gained increased interest from African Americans who feel exhausted by the perception that the American state is waging a deadly war against them, and has been for centuries. The Not Fucking Around Coalition was founded in 2017, and while many black nationalist outfits before have encouraged armed protests, the NFAC put black self-defense as the premier value its members must hold to. They have engaged in armed marches in the same way the open carry and patriot movements in the rest of the U.S. have done. And their leader, Grandmaster Jay Johnson, is currently under indictment for pointing his firearm at police officers during a protest in Louisville after the 2020 Breonna Taylor shooting resulted in no officers being charged. Black separatist ideas, social media groups, and organizations have been associated with the cop killings in Dallas, New York, and other cities in the last decade. Black nationalism, like white nationalism, has problematic tendencies that libertarians should oppose when they conflict with our conception of absolute freedom for the human person. African people in the New World have plenty of reasons to distrust and hate white-led institutions, and that is their absolute right of self-determination. A black nationalism and separatism that upholds the right of individuals to decide their own fate is perfectly in line with a liberal society. Long live the Republic of New Africa, and may a thousand flowers bloom. Fellow citizens of Africa, I greet you in the name of the Universal Negro Movement Association and African Communities League of the World. You may ask, what organization is that? It is for me to inform you that the Universal Negro Movement Association is an organization that seeks to unite into one solid body the 400 million Negroes of the world, to link up the 15 million Negroes of the United States of America with the 20 million Negroes of the West Indies, the 40 million Negroes of South and Central America with the 280 million Negroes of Africa for the purpose of bettering our industrial, commercial, educational, social, and political conditions. As you are aware, the world in which we live today is divided into separate race groups and distinct nationalities. Each race and each nationality is endeavoring to work out its own destiny to the exclusion of other races and other nationalities. We hear the cry of England for the Englishman, of France for the Frenchman, of Germany for the German, of Ireland for the Irish, of Palestine for the Jew, of Japan for the Japanese, of China for the Chinese. 
We of the Universal Negro Movement Association are raising the cry of Africa for the Africans, those at home and those abroad.